Hey hi everyone I am Sky Vaston and in this video I will be sharing my experience of trying to build my own programming language So first why I wanted to build my own programming language So for quite some time I have been wanting to get better in C++ and so I was looking for things to make using it Reason I wanted to get familiar with C++ was so I can understand Godot's code base and also get a good understanding of how game engines work under the hood i had earlier used stl2 to build a small little game watching a udemy course i bought so next i was thinking of trying out some other framework and build out a simple game using it in doing so i came across robert nystrom's book on creating our own programming language Seeing that I really got excited and wanted to try it out. So building my own language seemed like a pretty fun thing to do and I decided to do so using C++. So this was basically a win-win for me because building a programming language was something new and fun to me but also doing so with C++ would also help me get better with it, right? Well, my plan changed again. as i decided to use gd script as the language for implementation i thought to focus first on building a language rather than learning another at the same time but also i had a somewhat nascent idea in back of my mind to have a game where programming language is used to drive the main gameplay with that i finally decided to go with godot to carry out my objective So this is going to be my novice attempt in explaining how a language works. Let's pick a basic statement. Here the result of 5 plus 2 will be printed on the screen. Let's break it down and understand how it works. The first step is having a scanner that goes through the source code and extracts token. Source code is the program that a user writes. and its tokens are going to be words that carry some form of meaning for simplicity i have showed them as they are in the source code but tokens are usually made up of a bunch of properties that gives us more information about them let's have a look at it in more detail first we have token type and as the name suggests it tells us about the type of token here's all the valid token types we have in skyam Then we have the lexem which is the actual text that defines the token. Third is the literal. This is going to be empty for print but for tokens of type number or string it's going to hold their respective values. Additionally we have line that tells us the line number this token is found in. It is helpful for error reporting. For now I will going to hide it. So here are the remaining tokens for the statement print 5 plus 2. And that's the job of a scanner. We get the list of all tokens found in the source code. With the tokens found, we can now proceed ahead with parsing. But before we do that, we need to have a grammar defined for our language. Grammar basically defines the syntax and rules of the language. With grammar defined, we can create a parser based on that. So this demonstration I show you plays differently and not exactly how a grammar is actually processed. The reason I show it differently is to demonstrate the process of how grammar works. In this demonstration the tree is constructed from innermost to outermost nodes, but in the implementation it will be constructed the other way around. So let's remove print for a moment and focus on just the expression 5+2. Let's see what the grammar of basic arithmetic operations is going to be like. We start from the very top. First an expression is encountered which has a bunch of valid productions. In our case it's going to be binary. So we go to binary rule. In binary we process the first production which sends us to an expression again. This time we go with a literal which in turn chooses the number with expression visited we move ahead and visit the remaining ones
This gives us an abstract syntax tree that looks like this. The grammar I just showed you was a very basic one. The aim was to give you an idea of how grammar is used to define syntax rules for a language. If I would have had an expression like 5 plus 2 times 7, then we would have got two potential trees. Here only one of them is correct. So the full grammar just for evaluating expressions including logical operations is gonna look something like this. Let's see it in action. The way a tree is constructed is through parsing. So we will have a bunch of functions that are defined based on the grammar. So that means they will be called recursively. On the right you can see the function called stack and how the tree is being generated. That is first visiting the outermost leaf nodes and then from there going inwards towards the root. Once the tree is constructed, we can move ahead and go towards the final step of interpretation, which is basically executing the code. I think the idea should be easy to understand at high level. In terms of implementation, it does require some work. I went with using visitor pattern as done in the book to carry out the interpretation. Now there were some challenges I faced in building out the language. First challenge was error reporting, mainly the runtime error. Since treewalk interpreter makes use of many function calls that results in a huge call stack, the proposed solution in the book was to use exception handling to throw an error or get one to get out of the call stack, which is actually the best way to do this with current implementation as far as I can tell. However, GDScript doesn't support exception handling. Though I was able to make my way through this by some hacky ways, but I still think there are some loopholes in my implementation. Secondly, I skipped over the last three sections from second chapter, mainly because of resolving and binding section, because my code base got quite messy because of it. Considering I wanted to have my own syntax and doing those changes with my messy implementation in GDScript would have taken me quite long. As such, I skipped over adding classes and inheritance too, at least for now. So let's look at the syntax of Skyam. So I wanted to make it similar to Python or GDScript and use line break instead of semicolon and indentation instead of braces. To make it little more simpler, I also removed the need to have colon that we add after function signature, if else blocks and other such places. Other than that, the language currently is dynamic typed. I wanted it to be static typed similar to C++, C Sharp and such. However, implementing static types would have taken me quite some time, so I skipped it for now. You can look at the source code of Skyam on my GitHub repository. The link to it is in the description. I also attempted to make a short little game that tries to make use of Skyam to drive the main gameplay. However, the game is very very short, basically a demo. You can try it out at itch.io, the link is in the description. So that is it. I hope you enjoyed the video. Let me know what do you think of it in the comment section down below. I will see you in the next one.